Welcome to Booze and Bourbon, a podcast where we talk about all things paranormal and bourbon too. Now, here are your two ghostess hostesses with the mostest, Kim and Jen. Welcome back to another episode of Booze and Bourbon. This is the last one before Christmas. How crazy is that? On today's show, I have our friend and very special guest, Aaron Blake from Canadian Whiskey Corner to hash out the movie The Shining. Welcome, Aaron. Hi, Kim. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Uh, Excellent. And I just want to say thank you so much for having me on your show to discuss this movie. Uh, It's one of my favorites. I'm really excited to talk about the content and the haunted elements of it. And uh, I think this is going to be a great show. Yeah, it's such a classic movie. Before we started recording, we're going over some of the reasons why this is such a cool movie to discuss right now. Um, but before we get into all of that, I have some bourbon in front of me and I have you to thank for this bourbon. It's a Weller. Antique oh, yes. Seven. The best. It's so good. It's so good. I admittedly too, I'm not even going to do a cork pop. I mean, I could do it for sound effects, but yeah. I already have like, look at this. Look what oh, I already looks... have in my glass. That looks delicious. <laughs> and if I didn't have to pick my kids up from the bus in an hour, I would be pouring one for myself as well. I so... know. Okay. So I'm just going to take a little sip. Um, I don't know that I really need to go over how delicious it is other than it tastes like spicy, sweet, mapley candy and all of those good things. Um, I absolutely love this bourbon and it comes in at 107 proof, hence the antique 107. Um, so since I'm sipping on it, do you want to play one of my favorite little games? Yes, absolutely. Let's play. Would you rather? Do you want to go first since you're the guest? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I have a question that I think, I think it'll, it it might get you a little anxious, like thinking Mm. about the possible options. So, um, in the spirit of what we're discussing today and COVID-19 alienation, um, just being isolated, here's, here's my, would you rather question? So here's, here's the two options. So would you rather take a position as a caretaker at the, stanley slash overlook hotel for six months by yourself in the winter wow with no tv no cable you'd have food but you would be there by yourself for six months or would you rather be buried alive for 48 hours so you're six feet under in a real coffin you would have oxygen you would have oxygen but you wouldn't be able to see anything you wouldn't be able to move you couldn't eat you couldn't drink and you couldn't hear anything either for 48 hours. So I like I have tears in my eyes and I'm nearly choking right now. That's really bad. See, both are forms of isolation yeah. and both situations are really going to mess with me. So the mm-hmm. first scenario, if I'm a caretaker and I'm there all by myself and I just like let the walls of the hotel talk, I'm probably going to drive myself crazy. Mm-hmm. Then if I'm in a coffin six feet under can't see anything but i do have oxygen so i know i can breathe and i know i can stay alive yes i'm also going to go crazy mostly because i won't have anything to eat and i will get extremely cranky if i don't have anything to eat (laughs) so i think i'd rather uh have the hotel with me and my ghosts and feast on whatever food and whatever drink i can find i i understand that reasoning that's a that's a solid (sighs) answer right there tough that's a tough yeah. one yeah i get anxious just thinking about those options they both sound very very uncomfortable they do they really do thanks for that no problem okay my question for you then is if you you were suddenly killed at the hotel okay your ghost was stuck there yes would you rather be jack's ghost for eternity or Stephen, as in Stephen King's ghost for eternity? Oh, wow. So, I mean, as a, like a fan of Jack Nicholson, it's very, very enticing to, uh, to say I would probably want to be him. Although he turned, I'm not saying I'd want to do what he did because he did some bad things in that movie. Uh-huh. But, you know, one of my favorite parts of the film is the very last scene where he's kind of immortalized and, 
that picture in the gold room from 1921, like he's been in the hotel forever, right. which makes me think that possibly in this ghost world, maybe he's having some sort of element of fun, although it's hard to say. So yeah, because I'm a fan of Jack Nicholson and because of that picture, I'm going to say I would be Jack's ghost in the hotel. Okay. That's a cool answer. I like okay. it. Just after the break, we're going to get into today's main topic, which is all about The Shining and The Stanley Hotel. On today's show, we are getting into the nitty gritty of the Stanley Hotel and the movie The Shining. So the hotel itself was built in 1909 by Freeland Oscar Stanley. From what I can gather, Freeland was the creator of the Stanley Steamer automobile, so he was quite wealthy enough to be able to create such a magnificent building without putting much of a strain on his bank account. The hotel is actually located in the Colorado Rockies and consists of a sprawling 138-room hotel. It's quite known for being a family destination, but it's also very popular for various paranormal reasons. Thousands from the paranormal community visit this place every year, whether it's part of their own investigation or curiosity or for a haunted tour. Not to mention, it's a popular location for spiritualists to demonstrate psychic abilities and attempt to reveal what ghosts want us to know. What do the ghosts want us to know? I'm sure you've all heard of the movie The Shining, and you probably know that the movie was based off of true stories of the hotel after Stephen King famously stayed there. So we have a Shining enthusiast to join us today, and welcome back, Aaron. Hi. Hi. So happy to be here talking about The Shining. Yay, I know. Okay. (laughs) When you and I were talking about doing this episode, you said one thing in particular to me which stuck, and I don't know why. It's just the way you said it. I don't know why I haven't thought of it before, but you said the main spirit is the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's very, very true. It's, it's not your uh, traditional antagonist you'd see in a, in a horror movie. The spirit right. definitely is the hotel. What can you tell me about the movie? Like, what are your highlights here about this movie? Well, you know what I'll do is I'll just, I'll give a little synopsis of like some background information and some of the highlights and in, in, in supernatural elements of the film itself. Yeah. And um, I mean, right off the top, it's written by Stephen King and directed by Stanley Kubrick. So right off the top, you're getting two masters of masters of their respective crafts in uh, writing and directing. Um, two geniuses, arguably two of the best of all time. Uh, the movie stars Jack Nicholson uh, as Jack Torrance. And as we alluded to earlier, I've got a, and he's one of my, he is my favorite actor. I love his movies. Um, and basically the, the, the storyline is he and his wife and his child, his son, they move to the Overlook Hotel, as it's called in the movie, after he accepts a position to be the winter caretaker um, in the off season uh, for about a period of four to six months. Mm-hmm. Um, he's also hoping to write a book uh, during this time. And one of the reasons why I'm really glad we're talking about it in 2020 is that I just feel it is the most appropriate horror movie for 2020. Um, mm-hmm. Part of what part of what makes it so scary and like some of the madness that Jack experiences, you know, it could be tied into uh, the feelings of being uh, isolated and alienated from other people and not being connected to others in society. And I mean, in 2020 with COVID-19, I feel the general population public can relate to that uh, like more than ever. It's a real good 2020 horror movie. Um, And, you know, I know a big part of booze and bourbon and uh, your interests are haunted houses and and supernatural investigations. And, and going back to your comment earlier, you know um, like the overlook hotel is the quintessential haunted house. Uh, You know, as, as we said, the the spirit is the house itself. So, you know, you're, you're wrapping your head around that and like, You know, just to add some context, like uh, there's no true antagonist. Well, Jack Torrance ultimately becomes possessed by the house. But, you know, to start, you know, like in Friday the 13th, Jason is the clear bad guy, the villain, the horror character. In The Ring, you could say it's a creepy black haired girl who climbs out of the wells and comes through. Like it's very, very distinct. Right. Yeah. And, And I think not having that character there 
kind of psychologically spooks us out a little bit more. Yeah. And uh, I think it's part it's part of what the what the beauty and genius of the film is. And um, another thing is, if you watch the film, Stanley Kubrick, he uh, uses deliberate camera angles that like there's a scene where where uh, Jack's son is riding on a tricycle through through the uh, through the Overlook Hotel. Yes. And um, if you look at the camera angles, it's almost like like it's from the vantage point of the house kind of tracking and stalking the people Ooh. who are living in it right. And That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. And you get other views uh, at other times where whether it's Jack or his wife and it's, it, you, it could, it could be interpreted as the house is, is watching over. And I think that's, that's really crazy and interesting. And, you know, big question is why is it haunted? Like, what could it be? And early in the movie, they, they allude to the building allegedly being on an Indian burial ground, which mm. could tie into some of the haunted element. However, I feel from watching the movie and kind of reading a little bit about it, I think it's possessed by the devil himself, potentially. Okay. Uh, yeah, they, 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 make, they make a line. There's a line, actually. My favorite part of the movie is Jack's really frustrated, and he goes to the gold room uh, where there's a bar, and uh, he makes what's called, uh, I think it's, I'm pronouncing this right, a Faustian bargain. Okay. Uh, he's just talking to himself, which is, I'd sell my soul for a drink. Then all of a sudden, this bartender appears says i can take care of that and hooks him up with uh jack daniels so for the record for trivia yeah he's a bourbon guy jack torrance is a bourbon guy and he likes jack daniels drinks it multiple times in uh in the film and then it gets even deeper the 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 bartender gives him the drink and jack kind of starts interrogating him he's like who's buying my drinks i'm a guy who likes to know who's buying my drinks and um, the bartender, whose name's Lloyd, say the drinks are on the ha- are on the house, and he's like on the house. And then he also adds, "Yeah, those are orders from the house." So you you can kind of read into that two ways. Like like if you're at a restaurant, oh that you know orders from the house it means the management, right? But in this context, I believe Lloyd is saying orders from the house, as in orders from the building itself being the house. So right. I think it's very deliberate play on words that kind of supports. The house being so supernatural and haunted so yeah that's pretty wild yeah so that's that's great and you know as people see the movie uh you know without giving them too many surprises we you know jack ultimately becomes possessed and terrible scary things happen and uh i just want to add a little tidbit at the end if there's any listeners who want to go down the shining rabbit hole there's lots of videos and content online that talk about other secret meetings and conspiracies and secret messaging within the shining there's there's a, there's a theory that Stanley Kubrick thought the moon landing 69 was fake and he did a scene with the boy wearing a spaceship on a sweater and, and there's a bunch bunch of information. So Oh, that is so cool. I love that you've done this research on it. I yeah. feel like I need to watch it again now that I know this info and I oh. also feel like I love diving into rabbit holes. So I also feel like I need to do that. Maybe Amazon Prime needs to redo The Shining. And then throughout all of the scenes, if you just kind of like hover your mouse over towards the left-hand side, it'll like show you all of the background information about why the director did this. And I think they need to do that. Oh, I mean, that would be such a good idea. I think it's one of those timeless classics that, I mean, it came out 40 years ago and I think it's still pretty relevant and I'm sure even 100 years from now, people, even people in the horror genre will be studying that movie to learn from what made it so scary and, and such a like you know cult hit and a classic. My take on The Shining, I mean, the, the Stanley Hotel, it probably does have some dark, sinister history. Why? I have no idea. Maybe it is the location. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's the people who built the place. Maybe it's not. So, Aaron, we've talked about the the movie itself, but let's talk about the hotel itself. So your belief is that perhaps it is the devil is the reason why the Stanley is so haunted and such a paranormal building. Do you know anything about real ghosts? Because I found some stuff about real ghosts. Yes, I have some uh, information about the the real hotel, the Stanley Hotel. Okay. Um, That I definitely would like to share. So over the years, there have been many different reports of various entities showing themselves throughout the hotel. So the Stanleys themselves. Many people believe the ghosts of Freeland Stanley and his wife Flora are haunting the building. 
there have been numerous reports of them gracing the hotel's function rooms in formal attire. So they must have been pretty professional, you know, always keeping that good luck. Yeah. Coming in. Um, They seem to concentrate their energies on appearing in the lobby and the billiard room. That's interesting. I mean, especially where it's a secluded place. It's kind of funny. Like, I live in a secluded place, too. Let me tell you, I'm not dressed to the nines for visitors. (laughs) So, yes, they were a hotel. But still, I mean, I think that's kind of kind of interesting that they were always kind of dressed up. Yeah, I think it would be cool, too, if we were in like if you went. I hope to visit here one day. I'm I'm sure you probably would like to as well. But I would love to go to the gold room where uh, where Jack had his bourbon, his Jack Daniels. I think that would be a really cool place to see the Stanleys. Like, yeah, it'd be super cool if you got possessed when you were sitting at the bar there too. Well, we gotta make sure that doesn't happen. That would be a little <laughs> that'd be a little too much. <laughs> okay, well I have uh I have this list too, so I'm gonna read the next one. Apparently prominent paranormal visitor would be the Earl of Dunraven. The Earl used to own the land that the Stanley Hotel was built upon. He is considered one of the oldest ghosts of the Stanley Hotel and likes to frequent room four oh seven for some unknown reason. Many reports have come in from visitors arriving at the hotel. They claim that when they looked up to the window of 407, a spectral face was looking down at them. Guests who stay in room 407 often complain about the smell of cherry pipe tobacco at night. And this was the Earl's favorite choice of smoke. Ooh, and I think I think what I've heard and read about in the past is that like, Aren't scents like that really associated with ghosts and supernatural activity? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's that's one a big of the ways that they can apparently make themselves known to you. Oh boy. That's wow. Oh yes. boy. That's spooky. I got goosebumps. I got goosebumps <laughs> with that one. Um, I have some information here about Elizabeth Wilson. Mm-hmm. Um, she was a housekeeper of the Stanley Hotel in the 1950s when she passed away. It is her spirit that is thought to inhabit the room Stephen King stayed at, room 217, which is the most prominent, scary, spooky room in the movie The Shining as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Very strange poltergeist activity has been recorded in this room with doors opening and closing by themselves and lights switching on and off throughout the night. Yuck. Oh, boy. That's... I don't if I went there, I wouldn't want to stay in that room. I would maybe walk by and look at it, but no. That's like maybe a lifetime of bad luck or something. Something bad's gonna happen after going there. Something. We stayed in a haunted hotel for haunted. It it reminded me of the shining in so many ways. And I stayed just a few rooms down from it, and I did not even like walking by the room that was the reportedly the most haunted. It just gave me the heebie jeebies. Oh don't like it. You're more brave than me when it comes to these haunted houses. I don't want to. I I want to keep my distance a little bit. I, that level. I mean, I think it's awesome. You're getting, doing the investigations, but um, I've got another story here about okay. a small child. So okay. just oh, that's that's spooky in itself. There's a ghost of a small unknown child that seems to be stuck inside the walls of the Stanley Hotel. Many guests and ghost hunters have reported him running through the corridors, calling out for his childhood nanny. Stephen King himself even reported an incident where he had come face to face with this spirit child. Ew. So you know what they say? They say that if a ghost presents itself as a child, it's not a ghost. It is the devil. (gasps) Well, yeah. Then this ties in. I'm kind of like pivoting here. But in the movie, The Shining, two of the ghosts that the the house projects are the two murdered twin girls. Right. Whoa. So maybe that backs up the idea of Satan actually possessing the hotel. Wow. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. That's heavy. That's heavy, heavy content right there. I think I got to go like throw on my necklace that has a cross on it right now. Okay, but... Before you do that, I need to tell you about room 418. Okay. (laughs) So most of the ghosts at the Stanley Hotel seem to congregate to room 418. The staff that work at the hotel believe that this room is by far the most haunted location in the building. On numerous occasions, guests have been awoken by the sound of children playing outside the room door. When they get out of bed to shout at the kids in the corridor, they find no one there. 
that's that's yeah. Creepy. On other occasions, the occupants of the room have heard children crying throughout the night in the rooms to either side of them. When they have complained about the children the next morning, they were told that there were no kids at all staying in the hotel. Mm. Mm. More disturbingly, the beds in 418 often give off the impression someone is sleeping in them. Mm. So that's kind of like what I guess when the three bears came back from their hike and Goldilocks had been lying in the bed, maybe they had that little imprint. Like that sort of, is that what they're talking about? Ooh. Yep. Yikes. Yikes. There are deep body shaped impressions laid into the mattress as if an invisible being is lying down there. Finally, the ghosts of the Stanley Hotel are very frequent visitors and it is widely known as a popular paranormal location. Visitors are constantly witnessing unseen hands yanking at their clothing and listening to disembodied voices. There are many complaints throughout the year from visitors who have awoken to find their blankets taken off them and folded neatly at the end of the bed. <laughs> it just kind of makes me laugh because, I mean, I would love to have this in my house. Like, like, like my bed, <laughs> my beds are always so messy. If everything was like neatly done like that, oh, I'd be so happy. So I want this ghost. This ghost here can move in with me. And, and See, help me I would be so mad at that ghost because I have to sleep with the blankets like right around my neck. So if something <laughs> was taking them off of me and folding them at the bottom of the bed, I'd be so angry. Oh, that's funny. You know, you know that saying, different strokes for different folks, maybe <laughs> different spirits for different folks. Yeah. That one, that one would work for, work for my house for sure. <laughs> I keep wishing for like a kitchen ghost that just loves cleaning up things in the kitchen. That would be amazing. A kitchen ghost would be great. Uh, definitely one that me- cooked a little bit. Although I like cooking, but you know, not have to worry about dinner a couple times a week. True. And, like, and if uh, there was one specifically that liked to clean showers, that would be awesome. If any ghosts are listening out there, you know, you just DM <laughs> us and we'll give you our addresses and come on over. It'll be great. <laughs> Absolutely. We are taking applications right now as we speak. God. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for coming on the show today and talking about this amazing movie and the creepy stories behind why the movie was even made to begin with. Yeah. And if anybody wants to find out more about what you do and your greatness on social media, how can they find you? Well, I am active on Instagram. I have an Instagram account, uh, Canadian Whiskey Corner. So it's Canadian underscore whiskey underscore corner. I go on there and share tidbits of information about whiskey history in Canada, but kind of also touch on whiskeys I like the most, which are uh, Canadian whiskeys and, and bourbon. I'm yeah. a big bourbon fan, probably probably the most. And yeah, if anybody ever wants to uh, talk whiskey with me, please drop me a line or talk Shining. I'm, I'm always up for a good conversation. Love it. Love it. And if anybody wants to find more of my adventures with Jen, you can find us on Facebook. We are Booze and Bourbon, the podcast. And you can also find us on Instagram, Booze and Bourbon, all one word. And also, if you want to send us an email, you can send one to our Gmail account, which is boozeandbourbon at gmail.com. And if you really, really want to watch us on the TV show Haunted that we're on, you can find us on Eastlake Community TV, which if you're on the other side of Canada or down in the U.S., you probably won't be able to see where you're sorry. But you can definitely check us out on Saturday nights. It's channel 610 or 10. And that wraps up today's episode. Thanks so much for listening today, guys. And we'll be back for an all new Christmas themed episode on Friday. Thank you. Booze and Bourbon is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to advertise on the show, please head over to abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production.